Hi, this is Irish Identitarian. I'd like to ask for your patience. I'm not used to reading things that I've written, but this is such a serious and expansive issue that I can't just ramble off the top of my head. I need to be succinct. So thank you. In recent weeks, Europe has seen an epidemic of pre-planned mass sexual assaults perpetrated by non-Europeans, a phenomena they themselves call Taharush Gamamiya, or in crude English, mass sexual assault. This isn't a highly reported fact, but it is a fact all the same. This is a situation with many moving pieces. One of the more substantial moving pieces is the response from feminist Marxists. Those people choose not to respond to the fact that a condition on mainland Europe has been created which led to the mass breach of women's bodily integrity and dignity, but to the fact that people recognize that this has happened. When this intelligentsia spoke, they almost all echoed each other as if reading off of the same script with claims like, there are those who do not sincerely care about sexual violence, but only feign concern in order to propagate racism, with the undeniable implication that to consider this an Arab and African problem is invariably racism coming from the mind of a racist dehumanizing people like you and I by implying that we couldn't possibly care about the dignity of our female counterparts, and furthermore, assuming that only men are making these observations. If you think I'm exaggerating, take a look at the words of Ivar Arpri, whom I quoted above, speaking to the spectator.co.uk. She made the absurd claim that, quote, Violence against women is also at epidemic levels in Western societies, a claim that should infuriate any stable-minded Westerner, as it is not only uns unsubstantiated, but the exact opposite to reality, as violence across the board, including sexual violence, has sharply decreased over the last century. We respect women and each other, at the very least, we do not gang up on each other in public areas and unleash this sort of barbaric cruelty. Not only does this not occur to any of us to do this, but it is harshly forbidden by our society's morals. The type of behavior we see during a Tararush Gamiya attack requires at least some degree of social acceptability. The Marxist intelligentsia and their brainwashed liberal drones are not just blind to this distinction, but they wish to convince us that it doesn't exist, and declare anyone who points it out to be a thought criminal and be branded with the most terrible mark of shame. If you do consider this distinction, you will be branded a racist, and by effect, none of your opinions matter anymore. You're now a Nazi who wants to kill six million Jews and subject the world to unspeakable horrors and misery. Effectively, a Satanist. An embodiment of pure evil. I'm probably preaching to the choir at this stage in my presentation, but I had to lay the foundation first before I could say something new. There's something redeemable in Ivar Apri's report to The Spectator, which you can see for yourself, as I have linked the article in the description. The context in which she laid out the history of Tararush Gamia phenomena is a political context. It began as an intimidation strategy of political factions, and sure, as the cultural precedent was set, it took a life of its own, but it is primarily a political strategy. I'm confident in my observation that this phenomena could have been observed by some organization with anti-Western goals and then imported into Europe and used as a cultural weapon. 
It's noteworthy that these events have occurred in particular European countries, but not in others. Whether this observation is accurate or not does not change the effect that these events have had on mainland Europe. Women are infinitely more afraid than they were before to be in public out of fear of violence. The events have also made us aware that our local and national authorities are essentially powerless in the face of the phenomena, and in most cases they don't seem to care. This is a very this is the very definition of terrorism. Europe is officially under attack. A state of war has been declared against us, and it is in our enemy's best interest that we are oblivious to the fact. It's about time that we left our keyboards and our Google Hangouts behind us and venture into the world to protect our people and our land. It's clear that our local and national authorities are feigning intentions to deport this radical element and that we do not have sufficient influence over them to enact the stern policies that we know are required to keep our countries and our people safe. So for the time being, we need to act as partisans. I'm not suggesting we form groups or militias, but take it upon ourselves as individuals to resist this progression. It's clear to all of us that there is no legitimate leadership or great change to trajectory on the horizon. And sitting around waiting for it to come about or calling for it on social media is a fool's task. At the very least, there is a conspiracy of silence operating against us, and at worst, there is a conspiracy of genocide operating against us. Either way, we are cucked and we are fucked. If there is a solution at all, it lies in us as individuals. We do not need leadership, at least not at this stage in the war. All the information we need lies in our brains, our hearts, and the vast internet. What I'm suggesting is that both men and women arm themselves with whatever is available to them. Something small that can be concealed which won't pose a risk to yourself or others. If you are a person of good standing in your community, the local authorities will have no reason to stop and search you. If you do not otherwise misbehave, you should be able to go about your day unobstructed by police and always be ready for a fight. Women need to learn how to protect themselves. We live in a post-feminist society where women now enjoy the same liberties that men enjoy both socially and legally. There is a huge disparity between the liberty that women now enjoy and the responsibility that comes with that. We men walk around in public with the reasonable expectation of being attacked. Even aggressive individuals and most criminals still have the sensibility to target men in favor of women a cultural artifact which is reflected in violent crime statistics, which shows that men are at the highest risk of attack. Unfortunately, these newcomers do not have the benefit of coming from a culture that enjoyed the Enlightenment and all the wonderful values that came before and after that. They will target men with the intention to kill and women with the intent to rape. As a woman, you would be a fool to believe the feminist Marxist propaganda trying to convince you that your European men are as likely to attack you as these newcomers. Be vigilant. Be on guard. If you are surrounded by newcomers with the intention of violating your sovereignty, you may still be groped or raped, but you should leave your attackers with a lasting impression. A lesson to think twice before they try to violate another woman or attack one of your men. This is a sensibility that seems to be lost on Europeans, yet most other women around the world know that their sanctity may someday have to be protected with violence. Men need to be armed or capable of fighting when at festive events or other large public gatherings. Neither you nor your women 
should become so intoxicated that you cannot handle yourselves if something were to go wrong. Being completely fucked up is now a privilege you may only enjoy during public gatherings where newcomers are not present. As a man, you must be on guard around these people as you simply cannot trust them. Trust is a project. It takes several generations. Do not offer it to strangers. If strangers are present with you and are women, enjoy yourselves, but only to the point where you are confident in your agility of muscle and mind. I have heard a criticism many times, and sometimes it has been directed towards me in reference to my radio program and other propaganda. We shouldn't exclusively blame the immigrants. I agree with this sentiment wholeheartedly. If you are at home, in public, or at a private gathering, and you witness an injustice being perpetrated by anyone, newcomer or native, do the manly thing and intervene. We need to maintain our high trust society, but we should never forget that it is endangered from within as well. Every society will always have a rogue element that needs to be kept in check by more responsible people. If we become barbarians ourselves, what is the point of keeping the foreign barbarians out? In this era of conflict, we can count at least one blessing. In the face of what we are not, we have a very good idea of what it is that we are.